Tonight's top European Union stories from the Unit UK include European Union could investigate Formula One Group EU Commission's renewable energy goals are weak and Greek repo operation could tap more than 3 billion euros European Army why it wouldn't work plus Horizon 2020 to integrate Pakistan into the world economy now we were asked earlier today if our nightly news can be shared and placed on other websites the short answer is yes the nightly news episodes are Creative Commons share alike licensed and you can download upload edit and embed on any websites blogs and news sites you like get in touch with Andrew if you want more details it's Wednesday 14th of May I'm Rick Timmis and this is the unit nightly news First up, the hot story from our website, theunituk.com. European Union could investigate Formula One Group. The European Union is monitoring the controversial new system of decision-making within Formula One, it has emerged. Earlier this month, we reported that F1's four smallest teams, Marusa, Caterham, Force India and Sauber, had written a letter complaining about the new Rule Influential Strategy Group. The group is made up of the grid's powerful Big Five teams and, for historic reasons, Williams, who recently vetoed the FIA President Jean Todd's plans for a 2015 budget cap, Force India Deputy Bob Fernley told The Guardian that the big teams also received the lion's share of the commercial revenue distributed by Bernie Eccleston. Now, here's a thought for you. A democratic free society largely only needs a government to handle justice and public infrastructure. A socialist state manages housing, welfare, policing and education. A fascist or statist system manages and controls and legislates over all aspects, essentially drawing control over everything to the state. Now, ask yourself folks, where on this scale would you place the European Union? EU Commission's renewable energy goals are weak. The EU Commission's 2030 renewable energy target is weak and more ambitious goals should be set, according to Christian Heidelmick, an energy law expert at the international law firm Hash Shigal. Heidelmick spoke on Saturday about the European Union's 2030 energy goals and problems at the 20th International Energy and Environment Fair and Conference in Istanbul. Those main media sponsors being the Andalou Agency. Now, Heilmik said EU's climate and energy goals would be legislated by October 2014 and summarised them as a 20-20-20 formula, which means 20% reduction in greenhouse emissions, 20% increase in renewable resources and energy efficiency by 2020. Well, you can argue for and against this policy, but what you can be sure of is it's going to make energy more expensive. Greek repo operation could tap more than 3 billion euros. An operation that would allow Greece's government to tap into sizable cash reserves from various parts of the general government could provide more than 3 billion euros to state coffers though the administration will need to explore legal avenues in order to lay its hands on the money, according to a senior EU source. In its fourth assessment review of the Greek economy released on Friday, the European Commission said that a special form of repo operations would enable the state to use idle resources available in other parts of the general government to cover parts of its financing needs, which by May 2015 are estimated to be £5.5 billion. But the source said that even more than that amount could eventually be tapped by drawing on excess liquidity in government accounts. Now why does this sound like an exercise in robbing Peter to pay Paul? <music> EU Army, why it wouldn't work. The European Union is growing ever stronger. More and more power is concentrated into the hands of unelected bureaucrats. The Eurozone crisis played into the hands of the elite and gave them an excuse to strengthen their hold on the individual countries. 
I've written about all of that before, which is why today I would like to talk about a new but related topic, a common European army, and why it would be a bad idea. Many fans of the European Union have been open about the fact that they want the EU to establish a military force. Not in the immediate future, of course, but sometime. It's the ultimate dream for Euro integrationalists to finally have a military so that they can conduct international operations and give Kent, the hometown of Nigel Farage, the District 12 in the Hunger Games treatment it deserves. Of course, the last part is between the lines stuff. One could argue against the European army on the basis of national sovereignty. That's certainly a valid argument and the most important reason why I oppose such an army. However, there is another almost as important reason. A European army would not work. And by that I mean that it wouldn't even fulfill the function that those supporting the army wants it to fulfill, that of an alternative world police balancing out the military might of the United States. Well, this is a top article and recommended reading, so the links are below. Horizon 2020 to integrate Pakistan into the world economy. Acting Ambassador of European Union Pierre Miadon and Federal Minister of Science and Technology Zahid Hamid on Friday agreed that the Horizon 2020 programme will bring the EU and Pakistani communities together through research and innovation in various fields ranging from agriculture, energy, climate change to biotechnology, safety and security. These views were expressed at an awareness seminar on the EU's research and innovation programme, Horizon 2020, organised jointly by NUST and the EU. Ambassador Pierre Miadon stated that Horizon 2020 could enhance the integration of Pakistan in the world economy through a more diversified and high-quality delivery of products and services, as well as provide longer-term benefits such as much-needed job creation. Here is your reminder for the next episode of our Table Talk discussion show, which takes place tomorrow, Thursday the 15th of May at noon, broadcasting live from our website, theunituk.com, and of course on our YouTube channel and on Google+. Tomorrow we have a great panel of guests and we'll be discussing the question, is the EU building in an Orwellian state? Now put it in your diary and join us tomorrow. Uh, today in our video library, we want to draw your attention to our previous Table Talk show. Now, we ran this event live on our website and we had over 1,500 people watching live. Go and take a look. It's been well received and we think you'll enjoy it. Now, remember to visit our website, theunituk.com, for all the very latest news. You can find our page on Facebook by searching for The Unit UK, or one word. Join our community on Google+, Plus, where you can interact with us, voice your opinions, and post comments about our stories, and even get involved in the shows. For all the latest tweets, as they happen, then follow us on Twitter, at The E Unit. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for The Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. <laughs>